morning and welcome to the trade setup right here on Bloomberg Quint Live. And it's amply evident that anybody who takes a large positional call on the short side, believing maybe fundamentally that the markets are looking weak, runs the risk of running up against the US Fed. And frankly, that's what happened yesterday, right? Fed said that it'll buy, directly buy corporate bonds. Essentially, the intent of the individual debt purchases will be to create, as they said, a corporate bond portfolio that is based on uh, various parameters. But the key is, is a direct intervention into corporate bonds by the Fed. As soon as that announcement came in, the US markets rallied in overnight in, in trade. So they were kind of doing okay. This is the intraday of the US markets yesterday. And as you can see, the Dow, the SP, or the NASDAQ were was weak in the first half. I mean, you remember it was right. The futures yesterday were down about 700, 800 points when we shut shop. But look at that intervention by the Fed and then the markets moving higher. Not great gains, but gains nevertheless. The futures are in the green. And as a result of that, there is some positivity here. Now, keep in mind, this plus commentary from a bunch of economists over the last two days is looking at some positivity. Morgan Stanley, for example, the Chetan Ahaya team, which now writes on the globe, uh, came out with a note and mentioned that we have greater confidence, I quote them, that we have greater confidence in our call for a V-shaped recovery, given the recent upside surprises in growth data and policy action. They're essentially talking about the world and not India, but there is some optimism all around. And I presume that policy action is the primary uh, reason why Morgan Stanley or any of the other brokerages might be feeling bullish. Now, as a result of what the US markets did yesterday or the Fed did yesterday and what the futures are also pointing towards today, there's a smattering of green across the Asian board. I mean, you, you look at indices across and there is a lot of positivity there. Uh, these are indices of uh, the Hong, so Hong Kong index, HSI, or Kospi, which is up in trade. Uh, Nikkei is up about 3%. So, there is optimism all around, at least for the day today and at least for the start. And the SGX Nifty is not aloof there. The SGX Nifty 2 is pointing towards a fair degree of green on the screen in today's session. So we'll start off with a bit of a pop. And I fear for some of the people who initiated some overnight shorts yesterday looking at the markets and thinking that they are looking weak. We have 200 points in the green for the SGX Nifty. So a remarkable pullback in the session today. Now the trade setup. I think um, just the, the yesterday's session seems to imply that IT and pharma are finding favor because the currency to remember depreciated quite meaningfully. It came off uh, really, really rapidly. And therefore, maybe just maybe uh, because of that or just the defensive nature, there is some bit of buying that we've seen yesterday. Let's see if in an uptick market today, whether they continue to find favor or whether the risk on comes back with the bank. By the way, risk on was there in the mid sized PSU banks for sure. A large ones like SBI were languishing. But the mid-sized ones were very, very robust in trade yesterday. Everything from BOI to uh, IDBI, Canada Bank, etc., all of them did well. And the volume activity on some of those was pretty interesting, particularly Punjab and Sindh Bank, wherein we saw 50% of delivery volumes. So it's been an interesting yesterday's session. Let's wait and watch how it shapes up in today's session for the PSU Bank, simply because there is some optimism on the screen. Um, earnings. Uh, Three or four key names, the likes of HPCL, Ipa Labs, and it's it's in news for more reasons than one. I'll get to that in a bit. And MDC and Naveen Florin would be interesting. With Naveen Florin, we'll have most of the specialty chemical names out now. RT is out, Vinati is out, SRF is out, Naveen is out, and therefore the larger ones that are out with the numbers will make for some very interesting reading as to what's happened to the specialty chemical space. But yeah, HPCL would be the big one to watch out for, and Ipa and the commentary, if they give any, would be interesting to watch as well however the stocks that i would watch out for in the session today your four pockets and something that we've started now recently and i'd like to term in the stock of the day because that to my mind is the most important announcement yesterday we saw about bhgl and how badly the stock reacted it was our stock of the day yesterday today our stock of the day is tata motors arguably for the numbers i'm not even getting down to what the brokerages have said but this is what they've done Revenues were down about 27.7%. EBITDA was down about 70%. And margins versus an estimate of 7% came in at about 3.8%. And that's very weak performance, ugly performance, you would have to say. And the commentary isn't the most positive either. They have said that the Q1 FY21 will be significantly weaker. You don't like to hear such noises. Jaguar Land Rover outlook remains uncertain. You don't like to hear this either because JLR is principally what Tata Motors is all about. However, 
Uh, they did say that the numbers of late have started to look slightly up. Uh, the company's planned about 6,000 crore cost reduction plan, and they're planning a strategic partner for the passenger vehicle business. So they've tried to show up some positivity as well, but I would reckon that the numbers were just so bad. And, and the fact that they're saying that the JLR outlook is uncertain would not augur well. Yes, valuations could be in your favor, but somehow I think that there could be some bit of a negative reaction. I could be completely wrong, of course, but watch out. This, to my mind, is the stock of the day. Uh, the others, uh, and I thought uh, the, the announcement from RT Industries was interesting. Uh, they, they, of course, got the cancellation news as a result of which the stock tanked about 6% yesterday, but they did a con call with analysts and they have said, at 70 to 80 percent of the plant NPV, the plant which is now the contract for which has been terminated, the 70 to 80 percent of the plant NPV estimated at the time of the inception can still be earned, and the relation with the customer continues for the other products, and they will get a large hefty sum as a result of this cancellation and therefore uh, termination. And therefore, let's see if there is a bit of a bounce in RT industries today. I mean, there could be a bounce. They kind of saying that all the money that was invested is actually coming back in at an earlier stage. And the plant can be used for other products as well, or can be sold off, or what have you. So it's not as bad, maybe. Just that termination of such a large contract from a client raises some eyebrows, and therefore maybe the gains could be muted, even if there are gains. I would presume there would be some gains. Let's wait and watch. Um, a couple of other things that I do want to point out: pharma is in news today, uh, again for more reasons than I was telling you about IPCA and not just the results, but Nifty Pharma because the FDA is US FDA has revoked. The emergency use authorization for chloroquine and hydrochloroquine. Uh, and therefore, uh, this is important news. Now, I'll just tell you what Prabhuja's Kerala as a brokerage is saying. They're saying that other countries are likely to follow the US FDA guidelines because US FDA is like the mothership of uh, standards for pharma. They believe the development is negative for Zydus Cadillac, small negative, but negative nevertheless. Uh, they, however, say that it is positive on profitability because the sales of the medicines have been done at least cost of profitability because of the use of the pandemic. So maybe top line miss uh, impact, but not bottom line. They Remember, this is interesting. They are saying it's negative for Zydus and IPCA, but they are maintaining the buy call on IPCA labs and a hold on Zydus Cadillac. So maybe IPCA does not get impacted in any meaningful fashion whatsoever. So do watch out for that stock as well. If there are some negative reactions. It may not be all that bad. And very weak quarter four viewers for companies like Shalbi, Ramki, HCL Info. These companies came out with the quarter four details and very, very poor numbers uh, that each of these reported. Shalbi had um, EBITDA down 84%. Uh, Ramki, EBITDA loss of 108 crores. HCL Info, negative 25% margins. So very pathetic performance. Maybe some of these stocks could react negatively. I just want to end this uh, trade setup with a comment that I saw, which I found very interesting um, in a L'Oreal interview to Financial Times. And they mentioned in that interaction that this crisis, I mean, the crisis has accelerated the digital transformation of the beauty sector. And in e-commerce, uh, L'Oreal has achieved in eight weeks, I'm reading it out, we've achieved in eight weeks what it could have taken three years to do. Interesting, right? Um, the pace at which transformation is happening. Anyways, so do watch out for the sharp bounce today. Let's see if Tata Motors reacts positively despite the numbers led by the market, but the numbers were very, very ugly. And I dare say the pharma counters may not react as negative. Thanks so much for tuning in today.